first thing name of the clients are very important and more than that your first thing that they will ask will be what is your daily day to day job that you are doing inside your organization at the moment and the answer is exactly this okay now also let me start with the very beginning how it will go on they will say give me a brief introduction about yourself and your answer will be something like this let's say hi i am rima i have 6 years of experience in the it industry in which for the last 4 and a half years i have been working on the cloud in cloud i have been primarily working on aws or amazon web services in which i have worked on the services of compute database security storage migration networking developer tools and the containerizing of aws inside aws apart from this i have also been involved in the migration activities to aws apart from that i have also worked on various devops tools like docker shell kubernetes vagrant terraform ansible github jenkins pipeline that is a short intro about me no left no right mug it up this becomes your catch line for each and every interview second thing question is what are your daily day to day activities in aws your answer is my daily day to day activities are migration of the infrastructure if we have a application coming up online or if we need to migrate the client machines to aws which can be in variety of ways either it can be via migrating of the servers via amis to s3 to aws first migrating to a lower environment and then basically propagating it to the higher environments apart from that if at all we get any bug or a error or a incident or a change request or a service request via the jira tool we can be allocated to that job also and my job will be to fix that specific issue so from my perspective my team which is of six people we are continuously working on migrating the client's infrastructure to aws however in due course of time if at all because of the migration there is any bug reported i might be assigned that work and i might be working on that specific scenario or that specific ticket also next question what are the common bugs or issues that you face every day your answer is it can be something as a drift which simply means that i wanted to create a infrastructure and that infrastructure for some reason had a drift which means a error which can be something like volume which was to be gp2 became gp3 or s3 bucket which should have been private and restricted for no user became private and restricted for specific users this is known as a drift so my common issues that i face is generally a drift which we actually capture which can also be captured via my cloud formation templates or via my terraform drift itself if in case a customer has a change on that let's say they decided to go with a volume type and they decide to change it that can be a issue so i go there and i have two options either i can do it via the console or via terraform though in our company we are actually doing it via the terraform templates itself second thing my day to day activities can be first getting the errors what are the common errors common errors are a a machine is not responding a machine not responding can be due to various ways machine status check my vpc check my machine basic health check or resources check or more than often the reason is the volume size of my machine has exceeded 
So my machine was to be of 100 GB and there is already 100 GB of data in my machine, which means if I try to go and boot it now, it will not be booted up because there is no free space left inside my machine at the moment. How do I fix it? Pretty easy, we go and resize the volume, but more important than that, who told you that 100 GB is full? For that, you will never say that I went inside the machine and did DF minus H to figure out how much free space is left. The moment you say this, I know you are not working in AWS. So a big catch or a big red flag for me to stop the interview is, the moment you say, I go inside my EC2 server, I go and check the machine and I see that it is wrong. I know you are not working on AWS. You see the instances are created, yes, but no one gets the production access to the machine at any point of time. The moment they say that, can't you see it via the SSH machine? Your answer will be, we can, however, we do not have access to the machines then how do you figure out? You have the answers, right? Logs, where are logs? CloudWatch, where are those? S3. So actually we go to our CloudWatch logs to understand what is the error and looking at that log, we can understand that the disk space is free or it is not available. In short, you will never ever say that I went inside my machine and figured out that there was no free space left for me inside that machine. Rather, you will always say CloudWatch logs only. So what are the common, going back to the question, what are the common scenarios that you faced? Maybe drift, maybe more than often the volume size is full. In that case, I will have to resize my image, increase the size of my volume. How to do that? Pretty easy. Go modify the volume. But how did you even know that that was the error? Because I went inside my CloudWatch logs and figured out that this was wrong. Apart from that, the errors can be inside your RDS instances. Again, the volume issues. RDS, something known as slow queries. Okay, so when I go inside my RDS, I will also show you something as a slow query log. Keep it in mind that this is what I meant over there. In short, you ran a query inside your database and it is taking 10 minutes, hundreds of minutes to process. It means something went wrong. If something went wrong, you cannot connect with your RDS. Remember private subnets. You cannot connect with the machines at any point of time. So how will you figure out the answer is via my CloudWatch logs itself. If I go and do that, I can actually figure out what went wrong. The short answer is log. In no circumstances, one last time, you will ever say, I logged into my machine. No. If they say, why don't you have the access? Tell them that I don't have the access. The client has not allowed access to anyone to the machines. So how do you figure out via the logs? Is there anything that will not that you will not see in the logs? And the answer is there is nothing that you won't see in the logs. Logs is just a replica of your machine. Whatever logs you would have seen inside your machine, the same thing you are seeing inside your CloudWatch logs also. Okay, so that is the answer. Please don't fall in that trap. Many people fall. They will eventually give in and they will say that, okay, we go inside the machine and those who work on AWS, we know no machine never do you ins go inside a machine. Now, few things generally don't say like, I shut down the machine. You don't shut down the machine, honestly. That happens via the load balancer, via the rolling upgrades, via ECR or ECS. Never say I shut down the machine. Never say I reboot the machines, okay? If at all they say, did you shut down or did you reboot? You say, see, that is not my privilege. Client is having their own IT team. If in case there is a bug, we raise a ticket, we go to them, with the justification telling them this has to be done. They decide at their end. I don't decide at my end and go and restart the machine. That is not what you do. Okay. Never will you say I stopped the machine. Never will you say I started the machine. Never will you say I restarted the machine. Your job inside AWS is to simply provision the infrastructure. What happens with that infrastructure? If at all there is a bug, your job is to fix. You are not taking a decision on to start or to stop. That is a decision for the client alone. Also, don't fall into this trap. 
saying that I went and stopped the machine. It wasn't working. I went and rebooted the machine. No, your job is simply limited to say, I went inside the logs, figured out that the logs are not, uh, that the machine is having volume size. I went and resized the volume that I can do. Yes. Resizing I can do, but resizing after resizing, it didn't work out that we will do inside our DevOps and we talk about resize to FS partition things. Okay. There we'll talk about it. But even if you are not in DevOps, at least tell them that I figured out this was the error I told to the client and they would have gone and resized the volume. My job is to figure out the errors and tell them what has to be done. Exactly what resources are used and what machines are there. That is part of my cloud uh, of my client itself. They themselves will decide what all things have to be done. Okay. So these are general few traps that they will try to trap in. And please don't fall for that. Okay, now going back, interview questions, it starts, hi, about yourself, you know, what are your day to day jobs, you know, and generally few people in the end will ask you what is your team size, a safe option is to say my team size is of six people, how is it working, we have a manager basically so we have a daily meeting at 10 and there is one team lead and we are five people over here, and the work is distributed to each one of us which is generally a Jira ticket or a ticket, which is assigned to us or a task which is assigned to us, and we generally complete it and push the configuration what merging strategy or what branching strategy you used, we use GitHub because the provisioning is done via Terraform files or via cloud formation templates, whatever you choose. Uh, those things will go inside my GitHub and my simple job is to push it and deployment is done by the client themselves. Or you can also say that uh, the deployment can also be done in front of the client. I have seen some people in which case you will only do the deployment, but you don't do it yourself. Rather, you do it in front of the client in the call with them. I have also seen things happening like inside the lower environment. When I say lower environment, I mean the dev environment, the SIT environment, the SAT environment. These environments, you can go and do anything you want to do. But pre-prod environment, staging environment, and the production environment, you don't go and do. The client themselves will go and do it. So remember the environments. If they say how many environments, safe bet is four. I have a prod, I have a pre-prod, I have a staging, and I have a dev. My job, dev environment I own, remaining three environments I don't own. If they say, why don't you own? You say, I don't have the access. The architects have the access to it. If they give, then we can go and make the changes. We don't own the environment. Please give this answer only. No one owns the environment in the organizations. So until you have your own company or you are working in a startup, no one owns the environment. In that case also, there is an environment owner. So how do you go and decide that these changes have to be done? You say, if we go analyze it, we go and push the, we replicate the same issue inside our dev environment. We go and make the changes in our dev environment. If it is successfully replicated and successfully fixed after the script, we go and raise the ticket for it, or we go and raise the service request for it to the environment owner. The environment owner, if they approve it, then in that case, we will go and we will be given the access. We will go and push it to first pre-prod environment, then the staging environment, and then the production environment, if at all, we get the access. This is how you actually work inside AWS. Apart from that, what are your daily day to day jobs? Job number three is monitoring AWS resources. So why will you monitor? The answer is why will I not monitor? I need to know how many resources are being used whether my RDS is performing the way it has to be or not, whether there are any memory leaks, any CPU utilization. In this case, next question will come up. Don't you have alarms in place? And your answer will be, yes, we do have. We have created alarms for my various services of AWS, which are triggered if certain conditions are actually hit, like CPU hitting 90 or 100. In this case, what happens? Now, this is a dicey question. What happens? Ideal answer will be that a notification is sent to the emails and those who are responsible will take action on it. So what is your role? I am generally someone at any point of time will always be on call. On call simply means if you get a mail request, you will have to respond to that. In that case, let's say you will say that I got a on call three weeks back 
in which we saw the CPU hitting 90% for my RDS instances. In that case, I went and by the time I actually logged into and saw the RDS, it had actually gone down. So the reason for that, when we when I tried to figure out, I went inside my CloudWatch logs and I had a look at my error logs and I understood that there was resource utilization because of slow query, which was hitting 90%. We identified the slow query we identified the table which was causing it. We sent this table details to the developers. And after that, the developers did something which I don't know. But what I heard from them was there was some indexing to be added, which they added. Now, why didn't you do? Because you are not the developer. You are simple AWS person. You will tell them that you see this actually caused my error. And this is the slow query. This is the table. This is the exact query. Can you fix it? You are not the developer. Your job is to tell the developers. Okay. So be clear on that. The moment they say, why didn't you fix it? You say, I don't have access to it. As simple as that. I am AWS. My job is to ensure infra is working the way it should be working. So if they ask you that, okay, you tell me what would you have done? You would have said that in that case, I would have identified that why is this slow query actually happening? I would have gone inside that record. I would have tried to replicate inside my local environment. I would have run that query again. Again, it would have taken a lot of time for me. In that case, I understand few concepts in database. So I might have added indexing or I might have added indexing in the lower environment to see if it fixes something. But only adding indexing for one query is also wrong. I will go and run the same environment again for one day and monitor that because of me adding something, did it go and have another impact on my application? I will again monitor it for 24 hours to see if I again see a sudden spike. If I don't see it, I am going to tell the AWS people to go and make these changes or I will myself go and make the changes and then basically go to the environment owner and propagate the same changes to the different environment owners also. So this is what your story is going to look like. Never straight away if they say that uh, oh, 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 like something like are you working on ECS? Yes, I work on ECS. How do you create the pods? You say pods are not in Kubernetes. Fine. Do you work on Kubernetes? Yes, somewhat I work. Why don't you work on Kubernetes? The answer is just like I ask you, why didn't you eat? Why didn't you have breakfast today? It's not in my control. Right. So my client is not giving us access to EKS. So we are not working on that. If there is any service that you do not know, straight away, don't say, don't be, uh, be sorry for that. That sorry, I didn't work on it. Tell them the client didn't have the requirement. They didn't allocate us to this service in the training you are i tell you multiple services in reality it doesn't work that way a person would be working on ec2 maybe only auto scaling that's it for the four years they would only be working on that okay those of you who work in aws would be knowing that in four years or eight years you would be working on one task alone and this is a big thing that those of you who don't work on aws do not understand in reality in aws you work on one task yes Rima. No, no, sorry, Auntie. Okay. So in AWS, actually, in reality, you work on one task only. Maybe you go and work on some additional task and you do the repetitive task each and every day. That is what actually happens in reality. So don't be sorry for that. Uh, how does X-ray work? I don't know how X-ray works. I mean, I'm not a developer. Why are you not a developer? It's fine. I'm not. My client didn't have requirement for X-ray. They didn't use it. As simple as that okay so please don't be sorry for that tell them that the client didn't have requirement i don't i didn't work on it and that is also a reason why i am looking for a job change because i am working on the same day every same thing every day i want a change i want to learn few more things in the cloud okay now having said that your basic things are all set what have you worked on what is your team size what is on call support what are the environments what are the tasks that you do what if you get a ticket? If you get a ticket, you replicate the same in your lower environment. You push the fix to your lower environment, which is your dev. Please use the word lower environment. That tells the person that you are actually working on that stuff. Don't say dev, SIT, UAT. No. Those of you who work in AWS know the word lower environment. Use this word. That gives them the confidence that, okay, you're actually working on AWS, okay? Like if I am a programmer, I will use the word looping and conditional statement and operators multiple times. If I don't use, I won't say that, okay, I, I give a statement if bracket A greater than B semicolon. No, it means you are not working. I'll say 
fine logic has to be added fine i'll add two conditional statements on top of it yeah i know that is what gives you the confidence that okay this person actually works on this stuff same thing you also have to do use the word lower environment okay fine now straight away jumping to the questions that they are going to ask you i am not giving the answers by the way because answers you would be knowing anyways okay first thing compute compute services ec2 questions instance and instance types next spot why am i using ris why am i using difference between a dedicated host and a shared instances volumes what are the types 100% the question is difference between ami and a snapshot next network group 100% the question is difference between a security group and a acl or a access control list 100% the question is between the differences of my load balancer and alb versus nlb is what they will ask you they will also ask you about the layer so if you go for alb versus nlb inside aws so many people would have answered it and now if you are giving the interviews and you don't have much time just go type it over here click on images some imp person would have created the image for that okay alb versus nlb if you go over here it will tell you all the differences between them please go and read about it alb layer 7 nlb layer 4 okay they are not telling but alb level nlb level 4 alb is level 7 fine this is one of the question then auto scaling for sure they will ask you that how do you create auto scaling inside ec2 step by step you will have to tell them i create an lc i go here i give a name ami type if i want a spot a role if i want monitoring i add the volume i give the security group i give the rules i don't select the key pair and if they say why don't you select the key pair tell them that in any of the machines i we will never select the key pair because we never are allowed to log into the instance and even better we don't even create the key pairs those of you who have done ec2 understand uh, no key pair no worries instance ami new instance key pair make the changes create a ami go back to step one okay that is how you actually do so please don't say that you use this and they will ask you step by step how do you go and create auto scaling group where you will go give them a name give them whatever template or configuration you have over here then you will tell them all these steps two three four five six seven in my experience i have seen people asking you line by line exactly what do you do over there next step compute they also use a lot about lambda the question will be what were you working on in serverless environments and serverless environments you will say uh what language do you code on answer is python boto boto 3 whenever you say python please introduce the word boto and boto 3 and tell them that i also work on node.js the moment you say node.js no one will ask you anything and they will only go and talk about your environments and they will go and talk about your programming it's a miss uh, programming as in they will ask you okay you used node.js what is the program that you know the moment you say python or java they will ask you because in reality people those who are new to aws those who are just learning aws try to find similarities those people were doing java there will start doing java in aws lambda also there is nothing wrong with it but by default, the runtime for Lambda is created in Node.js. Now you can go for Java, no issues, but generally you don't go for it. Why? Because those who work on Lambda are actually working inside Node.js itself. <coughs> Sorry, uh, just a minute. Uh, see if I can get you something. Okay, I don't have that image, but I told you for a client in USA, the latest one, those people have approximately 300 Lambda functions and all of them are working on Node.js only. So please use the word Node.js. More about it, I am going to talk a lot inside your Lambda functions. So there you'll understand how the programming actually works and they will ask you for a sample scenario where you use Node.js. In real time, I can tell you uh, that again, for the client in US, the thing is that the moment 
you go and pick up uh, take up a picture from any of the iot devices the images have to be resized once resizing is done you also have to upload it to your s3 bucket and to upload it to s3 bucket and resizing that is not done via my program but rather it is done by lambda that is one scenario resizing the images scenario number two is dynamo db those of you who have done and completed lambda also dynamo db had something as a events if you remember right so if i specific record is found inside my lambda go and trigger lambda function there you can have used it also if you have worked on cognito service of aws there also we had before the user sign ups after the user sign ups you will have to go and trigger a few lambda functions use one of them or all three of the scenarios pick them up. So in that case, you will say that the user sign in in my company's name is happening via Cognito. And each time the user signs in, I have to go and add the timestamp of that signing in. That timestamp is added via Lambda itself for us to understand if the user has successfully signed in or not and from what IP address. These records are written inside DynamoDB and that is what we do. Okay, so this is what you are going to tell inside your Lambda functions or your compute. Next comes up my database. For sure, they will be going inside your RDS or relational database. Now, document DB and key spaces don't use it until you are hitting something like 20 LPA. Okay, don't go for this. Those people don't deserve knowing about document DB and key spaces. In that case, don't say if you go above 20 LP or you are planning for that, in that case, go for document DB and key spaces and talk about Cassandra. Anything less than that, people will anyhow, they won't even listen to you. So for those people, your answer is in short, I worked on RDS. Your answer will be we worked on database. Your answer will be I worked on MySQL database or PostgreSQL. Your answer will only be 5.7.33 no 32 no 34 only 5733 done if they ask you have you worked on rds your answer is yes my sql 5.7.33 that should come out like this only don't say i have worked on my sql yes and they will come to you and ask what version no my sql 5733 that gives them the confidence yes you have worked on that okay fine next what was the machine type no if you will always say m5 large only no oh, sorry <laughs> you will say r5 large only not m not t not x only r5 dot large so two things should come to your mind straight away mysql 5733 r5 large done next volume iops 1000 gp auto scaling to 2000 gp something like this has to come to you okay 1000 and 2000 is the maximum threshold you will also say that you had a multi az deployment or a standby instance for you you will also say that your database never had public access whatever they say if in the interview they say what if i want to give my database a public access your answer will be i haven't i have never given anyone public access Anyhow, I cannot think of a scenario where I will give my database the public access because I am pretty sure this is a security violation. This will be caught via my AWS security audits itself. So I cannot think of a scenario where I will give public access. If they still say that, okay, that is fine. But still, if you want to give public access, your answer will be, See, again, first of all, I need the permission for I will need the permission from the environment owner if they actually want to do that. If they still say that in that case, I will go to my security group and allow that specific IP address only. And I will go to my NACL, allow that IP only. And I will go to my route table and allow that IP only. And I will go to my NAT gateway, which is attached to my route table. And I will allow that IP only. And finally, security group will only allow that IP. 
if all of this is done, then my database can become a public database only from one IP. And if they say, what if from all the places you will again say, see, this is a very bad design, honestly, we should never do this. I never did this, but if required, instead of a specific IP, I will give all the IP addresses. What they are interested in knowing is no one will ever give database the public access by the way, okay? But what they are more interested in is knowing if you are going to do this. If you are new to AWS or if you don't know AWS, you will say, huh, I will give 0, 0, 0, 0, and it will work. Please be prominent in saying I will not do this, okay? Next up, database, the same old story. What was the backup? You will say PITR. You will say that my logs were slow query logs. This one I have already told you in the beginning, right? Slow query logs, very important thing. Then I can have the, merge, uh, the minor upgrades. I can have the window where I will want the maintenance activities to be done. Backup anyhow is done via AWS itself via PITR and the backup retention is 35 days. However, we had also created event spirit to go and create the backups which were coming inside my snapshots over here. Apart from that, I can also go and replicate it to another global region of my choice that are the questions in your rds next up comes your networking for sure 100 percent they will ask you route 53 and the records that are possible in route 53 a a triple a ns txt srv mx soa these things they will ask you what is the meaning of this and 100 percent they will ask you about the traffic management geolocation latency simple endpoint all those things multi-answer all those things whatever we had discussed inside our traffic policy they are going to ask you about that also please be prepared for this and this generally if they are angry with you in the interviews and now if they want to teach you a lesson they will actually go to traffic management and dns management in my experience i have seen like this if in case now the only tragedy with you is you understand this a lot and not many people understand so if in case they want to teach you a lesson they will straight away jump to route 53 service itself and they will say okay what is this what is this Okay, because they just want to tell you that you don't know AWS because as I told you, very few people work on this service also. Also, yesterday, one of the interviews, not yesterday, on Friday, they had asked, uh, Thursday actually, that what are the global services? What are few global? What are few local? Global is S3, Route 53, IAM, Paling, Global Accelerators, all these things are global services. Others are regional services, RDA, CC2, all these things are regional services, VPCs and so on. So please be prepared for these questions also apart from that vpc we have done only today but still if they ask you vpc is pretty straightforward what is a vpc what is a subnet what is a route table nacl versus security group what is the difference between your uh, load balancer what is the ip address versus elastic ip what is a transit gateway how do you connect multiple gateways or multiple networks with each other what is a peering and how can i replace in that case if they ask you that how is your infra created you will say that my infra is part in client data center and it is part in aws data center okay so how how are you connecting you see, your answer will be see when i started it was all in transit gateway only so as far as i know and as far as I see, everything is transit gateway only. But I heard her, uh, from people that earlier it was via virtual private network only. You know or you don't know, it doesn't matter. You will have to speak in this way only. You will say, earlier it was via VPNs. I know virtual private network. We had customer gateways. This is what I heard. We had VPNs and then somewhere back in 2020, before I joined the project, they replaced all with transit gateways. Then the next question, see the advantage of giving answer like this is, they will ask you uh, the question, how is it connected? And you are not straight away saying transit gateway because you want to lead them to that question. So you are saying, see, earlier it was via VPNs. I heard from people, but I know that in 2020, they actually changed it to transit gateway. So when I joined the project, it was all transit gateway. You know, the next question that is coming up is why transit gateway? And you are ready for the answer also. Transit gateway, multiple networks can connect with multiple VPCs. 
because my client is in abu dhabi and in dubai they need how have their two direct connect applications or two data centers which have to connect with aws via outpost in that case it is very easy via transit gateway if i were using vpc peering it would not have been transitive in nature use the keyword transitive in nature so i will have to create various vpn connections on the other hand a transit gateway is simply one and done they are not going to ask you anything in vpc that is how you should lead them to ask the next question okay so that is about your virtual private networks or about your networking concept okay migration and transfer this we are going to do in detail inside our devops class where we are going to go and do real time implementation of the migration and these things but in short even if you don't do that that is fine you can just tell them that i migrated the database inside aws and how did i do uh, if you if you are not taking these services no issues you can go to database take a dump put it inside s3 go inside rds and restore the data from s3 so what i mean is if you go over here inside rds you have the option of exporting the data from s3 bucket itself that also could have been taken okay next up okay that's good okay so next up i have my uh, final few services security identity and compliance in this one they are going to ask you about iam a lot uh, and they will ask you what are the security services um, please go and just read about them in one of the interview they had only asked okay tell me about the security services and give me a brief about it so it was as easy as just saying artifact and this and audit manager and this and certificate manager and this at least remember few services primarily of them being iam and firewall and kms and audit and certificate manager which you have done by the way and cognito and finally waf and shield more about it in the in the class we are going to deep dive into each of the services to figure out uh, but for now at least know the name of the services and just tell them that okay i have worked on this and for sure they will ask you about iam 100% that is where iam actually gets you the job also they will ask you iam they will ask you please open notepad and start writing the policy and there you will have to go and start writing the policy those of you who know it is all about ear on the top version number which is a specific date so that they are going to ask you and finally going to the storage what are the various storage type you will be talking about s3 you will be talking about your network file storage or efs or elastic file store s3 uh, might ask you if your experience is less than two four years they might ask you about the storage classes of s3 but i have not seen many people asking about that now uh, at architect level they will ask you about more about s3 and how do you replicate the data to various data centers how do you encrypt it if it is encrypted and you remove what happens if you remove it and then add what happens then they will ask you about the glacier also glacier basically you understand it's a low storage class and now glacier problem you will tell them that earlier it was a problem because uh retrieval took time but not not anymore now it doesn't take much time because i have something as glacier instant retrieval also in this scenario so you will be talking about that part also about your glacier and finally uh, you'll be talking about your edr or elastic disaster recovery this again we'll be talking about inside a uh, migration class or a devops class next thing s3 uh, pretty straightforward what is s3 cloud storage where are the backups stored cloud storage where is rds backup is stored where is your vpc flow log is stored where is your logs is stored at the end of the day it all lands up inside my s3 itself so these are going to be your interview question what they are going to ask you and that's pretty much it actually now if you i uh, mean those of you who are taking the class now and uh, those who have not completed aws you would have understood that i tell you many things but not everything is required if i have to pinpoint on the services let's start from the beginning application integration event bridge one only compute ec2 lambda done containers we are not talking about devops database only rds by the way okay then inside my uh, here migration just dms then networking just vpc and route 53 and security just iam if required waf and shield and inside storage efs and s3 huh. efs they will ask you how to attach the instance to efs that i will tell you in your efs class but if you want to do it now itself if you go inside my repository of and alike it is all present over there so go here go here and go here and go for efs 
Okay, I've already placed all the commands over there as it is. These are the commands, that's it. This is your file system ID, that's it. Just replace it with your actual ID, done. Okay, these are the commands. So these are the only things which they will just move round and round on these topics only. Now, if you answer this, next thing will come for your DevOps tool. What is your Docker? What is your Terraform? How do you manage infrastructure? But that is next part of the story. Once we are done with our DevOps tool. So this in short is what your interview is going to look like. Now, any questions if you have?